Through the years, many have looked to the skies for inspiration and wonder. For just as long, a few have been driven to reach for the top. In the 60s, KXOK in St. Louis was a gathering place for a few who not only reached for, but also made their way to the top. This is the story of how they got there. KXOK Radio Go Go St. Louis, Missouri KXOK began broadcasting in 1938 with a 1,000 watt transmitter assigned to the 1250 frequency. Two years later, the power was boosted to 5,000 watts and moved to 630 on the dial. We didn't have television in the beginning. Uh, I was born in 1938 and television arrived really in 1949, 1950 where it became a universal vehicle. So what we heard on the radio, in the radio dramas, we had to imagine and see in our mind and that's called theater of the mind. So we developed imaginations. Bill Cradle here, inviting you to help yourself to fun and music, the new sound way, the OK way on KXOK. Instrumental or vocal, if it's on top, we'll have it for you. So set your smile and keep your dial on 630. In 1954, General Manager Chet Thomas and his partner Elsie Roberts Jr. purchased a station and moved it to a site on North Kings Highway that would become known as Radio Park. The station soon attracted the attention of Todd Storrs, the innovative president of the Storrs Broadcasting Company. Storrs had developed the Top 40 format with stations in Miami, New Orleans, and Omaha. General Manager Jack Sampson recalls the early strength of KXOK. We had a lot of power, you know, 630 on the dial, 5 kilowatts non-directional. We went a long way and had a lot of potential audience way out. The basic concept of Top 40 was its broad appeal. The charts of the times were varied. But Top 40 was popular music. We had, we had pop ballads, we had Elvis Presley, we had the Beatles. But Storrs had only one goal when he arrived in St. Louis, to be number one in the market. Make it or break it on KXOK St. Louis. Bud Cannell was about to change the sound of St. Louis radio. If we could put the kids to bed listening to KXOK, then when the adults turned on the radio stations, the, the radios the next morning, they would be tuned to our station. Good morning. Hey. Good morning. X. Good morning. Oh. Good morning. Hey. From Radio 630. Oh. Hi there, this is Wayne Kennedy, your recreation reporter with KXOK's Teen Town News. The Royal Court of Bayless Teens will welcome the Rhythm Kings to their Palace Ball on the 11th. The Sheiks and their beauties of Melville are due for exotic treats when the caravans arrive on the 11th at the R9 Teen Town. Squares will be out of style when the twisting Esquires take the bandstand at the Promenade in Manchester on the 12th. Hancock will rock to the cool sounds of the aptones on Thursday the 12th. This promises to be a great night, so be there. So long. Car 63, where are you? Car 63, where are you? Car 63 is now located at Jacob's Standard Service Station at 5738 Delmar. That's Jacob's Standard Service Station. Everyone who comes up to KXOK's Car 63 within the next 63 seconds says 63 skidoo. Well, it gets a free record. The newscasts. They gave you the news headlines. And it was surrounded by what are called music impacts. Side on. Two American military advisors are dead and two others apparently captured by communist guerrillas after they staged an ambush near a U.S. helicopter base north of the South Vietnamese capital. Canal needed to put together a team that would take them to the top. I'd run an ad, a, a large block ad, in uh, a publication such as a cable or, or broadcasting cable magazine and um, openly invite applications. I was, I'd only been in radio a few years and there was this ad and it said, you know, KXOK, morning personality. I knew I didn't have a chance. So I put this little tape together and I sent it to him and boy, within two days he called me. I couldn't believe it. 
From Pittsburgh came Stephen B. Stevens. I sent an audio tape to um, Bud Cannell, who was the program director, just because I had heard the station was looking for um, people with voices. <laughs> Stephen B. Stevens with Sports of the Day. In the NBA, Cincinnati defeated New York 132 to 125, and Boston down Detroit 112 to 105. It's announced today the Cassius Clay Ernie Terrell heavyweight title fight in Houston, February 6th, will be telecast live to Europe and Asia using both communication satellites simultaneously. KXOK's basketball all stars play next at home in junior high school Friday night. That's it from the world of sports. Remember, all the good sports are on KXOK. Bob Shea was the KXOK News Director. Essential News from KXOK, Radio 63. Robert R. Lynn had graduated from the University of Missouri School of Journalism. I had no intention of getting into broadcasting, so I didn't know KSTL from uh, KSHI. I... Richard Ward fatherly came in to serve many roles. And Bud uh, hired me from New Haven, Connecticut, at a radio station that I was working at, WDEE. Director of Programming Ray Otis had worked in Cleveland and Detroit when his demo tape crossed Connell's desk. From hearing him speak, I knew that uh, anyone would believe him, anything he said. He had that honesty in his voice. Can you hear it? What comes out in the spring besides the birds and bees? Oil on your skin, that's what. Revlon's new Natural Wonder Spring Cleaning Kit to really clean up oily skin is what you need. Everything is in it absolutely oil-free. Five absolutely oil-free Natural Wonders, everything you need to clean up, medicate, and make up pretty. And you can try them all right now in Revlon's special spring cleaning kit for just $3.50. I came through St. Louis, and I hit the button, and it was on a hot, steamy St. Louis night. And it was at the end of the first day's journey. And I heard this radio station that knocked my socks off. I had never heard anything like this. Boy, say that, matey, on KXLK, you just heard from it parade number seven. And next is number six from the platter pole. It's all plot of a twin spin. Davy O'Donnell covered the morning. <laughs> oh, live it up there on the Davy O Show. <laughs> Twisting the night away, we'll twist the rest of the morning away on KXOK on the Davy O Show till 10, all right? Hang in there for all the good sounds. Huh? Peter Martin was a longtime St. Louis radio veteran. You've heard of the feud and fighting Martins and the Coys. Well, this is Peter Martin, not one of the mountain boys. Listen for new sound, new programming, the newest top tunes. Stay with us. 6.30 on your dial. Multi-talented Nick Charles worked the early afternoons. That's it for the brand new Top 10 at 9 KXOK minutes to 1 o'clock. Uh, you'll hear all these hits, most of them anyway, at the Nick Charles KXOK Traveling Shindig. Live and in person tonight with the Del Rays and the Fredericks. 8.30 p.m. at the Collinsville Park Ballroom in Collinsville, Illinois. If you can make it by, you'd be glad you did, I bet you. Keith Morris kept things moving after midnight. This is KXOK's Keith Norris with the news in brief. Fire on the river. St. Louis firemen brought under control late today. A four-alarm fire which raged through double-deck barge frequently tied to the steamster Admiral. This group set out to grab the ears and hearts of listeners. Ray Otis on the sound of radio. Have you ever saw colors when you heard sound? For example, a soft, melodious song that ebbs and flows in a narcissist thesis pattern was perceived in your, in my imagination anyway, as white. Something hot was red. A bass or alto saxophone was a darker sound. It was a darker color. And uh, these were associations sometimes you programmed by this psychological color. You never played the same, you know, the same type, the same sound, back to back to back. And he...
station was generating excitement and the ratings began to climb. We were there to build this station into a powerhouse and, and we did and when we built it we felt like it was our accomplishment. It's a known fact that the only way to get the most accurate and dependable survey of the best selling and most requested songs in the St. Louis area is from a KXOK Top 63 Sing Along survey published weekly and available at most record shops and department stores. Be sure to ask for the latest KXOK Top 63 survey wherever you buy records. There's something special on every Music of the 60s was rapidly changing, from the doo-wop era to the British invasion. With much to choose from, the KXOK playlist was carefully selected. We only played really good material, but we played a broad range of good material. But the music was only a means to an end. Radio is a business, and the KXOK focus was clear. We weren't in the business of selling spots. We were in the business of selling audience. Lots of audience. The lineup was solid, and the listeners were tuning in. But Cannell was still searching for something magical. Then he pulled a rabbit out of his hat. The uh, name Rabbit... R-A-B-B-I-T-T, -T, complete with two T's, was uh, a creation for WFUN in Miami. Actually, it was Daddy Rabbit. It went over so well in Miami that uh, when I came to St. Louis, I began to think that um, we would uh, bring Rabbit to the stage in St. Louis. But the timing wasn't quite right. I had a guy by the name of Don Schaefer who was already in the 7 to Midnight show, and I liked Don a lot, and he, he had the capability of, of, of giving us the performance we wanted to take the ratings. So we bought him a couple of pet skunks and called him Don Stinky Schaefer, and he walked around town with the pet skunks. I have a message from Kay is what I have. Hey, Jackie, please stop talking about him because I want to talk about him. Sign Betty. Don's uh, shifting to a better time slot allowed the uh, 7 to Midnight open uh, to, to become open, and we filled it. We did our typical deal where we run an ad, and um, I received quite a batch of tapes, and I, and I chose a fellow by the name of Ronald Ells to become the first Johnny Rabbit. And um, he did not work out. He was with us uh, around a year, a little less or a little more than a year. And um, Ray Otis, by then, I had elevated to program director, and I had become station operations manager. So um, uh, I told um, Ray to find us a replacement for the 7 to Midnight show, and he found Don Pietro in Phoenix, Arizona. And uh, we just transferred all of the uh, information and the personality, the persona to Don Pietro, and he became the full embodiment of Johnny Rabbit. Don Pietro Monaco had been an actor with a few notable credits when Ray Otis heard him on Phoenix Station KRIZ. What do you know? What do you say? What are you gonna tell to K? What's the latest hullabaloo? Okay, he's got the answers for you. Rabbit to the rabbit at 476000. Kathy wants to go on the last train to Clarksville with Dennis. Hi to Mrs. Rackers in Jeff City. Judy says I'm a believer to Tom. To capitalize on the success of the Beatles and other British groups, a local department store spokesperson, Delcia Devon, soon appeared on KXOK. KXOK um, actually was a station that uh, I made commercials um, on for Famous Bar. Johnny, yeah, Johnny, yeah. can I take a second here to tell the girls about the great Good Time Catalina? Why don't you take 57 more? Are okay. these the pictures of the swimsuits? <laughs> yes, they are. Look, Bruno. Oh, look. Look at the girls. <laughs> look at the swimsuits, Bruno. That important thing. Bruno J. Grunion came from the creative mind of Pietro Monaco and soon became an integral part of the show. In time, even Bruno appeared in ads and promotions. Congratulations, Christy Goodman. You're the lucky lady who has been selected by the KXOK judges. Preparations are being made for the date of 68 with Bruno J from KXOK. Christy, you'll be dined at the Cheshire Inn, courted to Camelot at the Esquire, 
and I screamed at Cyrano. You've been screaming for a week. <clears throat> Johnny, then a wonderful ride through the city in Bruno's chauffeured limousine finally deposited at your doorstep. Yeah, yeah. And Granny just asked me if you need any help on how to handle a woman. There's a way, so wise old man. I want you to Not the one, Granny, a way known by every woman. I'm going to get you. Johnny Rabbit became a St. Louis icon. It's out of sight. From Vanderbilt's the pick hit of the week on KXOK. Friendly. Right. 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 Richard Ward Fatherly recalls some of the special elements of the Johnny Rabbit show. Hanna-Barbera provided us with the laugh tracks, some of which they or some of the laugh tracks they used on their syndicated TV shows like the Jetsons and uh, the Flintstones. He would simply press a button and he would get a, a, a sitcom laugh track. I had a Clem Cadiddlehopper and uh, Rosemary Kosnowski who's in Mineola, Missouri tonight. And we... <laughs> Boy, I'm not kidding, right? I just went up to the boss. Is he in a bad mood today? I said, boss, where's the water cooler? And he said, in Alaska. With Johnny Rabbit leading the charge from 7 to midnight every day of the week, KXOK ratings soared, and he became a local celebrity in the process. KXOK and St. Jude Children's Research Hospital present... The Teenagers All-Star Show, headlining Danny Thomas and KXOK's Johnny Rabbit, and featuring... The top 10,000 teenage solicitors for this year's Alzac St. Jude Teenagers March Against Leukemia and Other Blood-Related Diseases. To join the 1966 Teenagers March, send your name and address on a postcard to... Johnny Rabbit and Danny Thomas, KXOK St. Louis 13, Missouri, or call Mission 55200. March dates September 24th and 25th. <laughs> This year's goal, $100,000. Don't let Johnny down. Don't let Johnny down. Don't let Johnny down. Don brought to the table his ability to perform, and that was far beyond what we required on the air. Don was the consummate rabbit, not only on the air, but off the air. Sometimes we would leave the chase at five minutes to seven. Now, we were only going down King's Highway to Radio Park, but we would get it, somebody would bring his car, his big Buick, to the, to the door, and we'd jump in the car, and he would race hell for leather down King's Highway on the inside lane, in and out, in and out, and, and I was white-knuckling it the whole way because he was going so fast to get to the station to start his program at 7 o'clock. And it was, it was just hair-raising <laughs> to, to, to use it. Um, all right, we're up there, down to the Boondocks. Down to the Boondocks, and we, we purposefully detained the details to the Beatle contest because we want everyone to get it when we're running out of time. Um, Johnny and I went to Chicago together. We flew together to see the Beatles in Chicago. Fifteen days from today. I mean... Yes, Bruno J. Oh! You could be one of the lucky Johnny Rabbit Army members who will be able to accompany... The Rabbit! or Johnny Rabbit to Chicago's Comiskey Park and see John, Paul, Ringo, and George in person. Starting this Monday, that's your Beatles of... What are you doing? I want to hold your head, Rap. No, Bruno, yeah, cut it out. Bruno, you're not going. Oh, Rap. Oh, yeah? Oh, yeah, i tell you something. I think you'll understand. When the concert was over, uh, Johnny had a press pass to go into the, the press room and meet with the Beatles. I didn't. So I sat, I sat outside under the, the bleachers waiting for him to come out. Nobody was around. It was really quiet. And suddenly the door to the press room opened and out came this long-haired young man who came up to me and said in a thick Liverpudlian accent, and I'm not very good at accents, um, Hey, love, do you have any, do you have any powder? And I said, what for? He said, well, Paul needs to powder his nose. 
So I said, oh, okay, um, but can I have it back? So he said, oh, sure. So, so I gave him my powder compact, which he took and came back a few minutes later um, and gave it back to me. And I said, well, did Paul use it? He said, oh, yes, he used it. So there was my powder compact that Paul McCartney had used to powder his nose. <laughs> this is the sound of rabbit power. There were many factors that made the Johnny Rabbit Show popular, but Bud Cannell recognized the intangible. Without the charisma of Don Pietro, it would never have been as big as it was. Other promotions drew the attention of listeners. It seemed as though KXOK was everywhere. The KXOK Millionaire promotion was a stunt dreamed up by Bud Cannell where I would appear in a top hat, uh, tails, a red carnation in my lapel, tuxedo, I would drive about uh, St. Louis in a Rolls-Royce Silver Cloud limousine. The KXOK Millionaire showered gifts at weddings, at sporting events, and even at the grocery store. The KXOK cast of characters had something for everyone. There was a guy at Washington U wore a black bag for a whole semester as a, as a protest against uh, the anonymity of being a, a Washington U student or some such bull. And he called a news conference to explain to the world why it was he had worn this black bag and uttered no sound for an entire semester. Over his head, nothing there but eye holes, arm holes. And he was going to have a news conference at 11 o'clock. Stephen B. showed up in a black bag at 1045. By the time the real black bag got there, Stephen B. had given Bob Shea of our own station an interview. <laughs> He did his Bruno J. Grunion voice, and, and he gave interviews to two TV stations, three radio stations, and when the real black bag came in to express his, his anger over the world, everybody was gone. <laughs> I remember the fellow who was the news director, and he hated to use the same word twice in a story. So... It would start out as a fire, and if it merited another sentence, it would turn into a conflagration. And if it merited a third sentence, it would turn into a holocaust. Even as the political landscape was uncertain in those days, KXOK provided a comforting sound. Many of us went to bed at night not knowing whether we were going to be blown up by atomic bombs. And so Top 40 was a way of being a counterbalance to that. The team assembled by Bud Cannell was complete. Robert R. Lynn describes what it was like. We were a family. Everybody liked everybody else. Nobody was bigger ego than, well, some were a little bigger, but nothing, nothing uncontrollable. Richard Ward fatherly on all those varied personalities. There was an incredible amount of synergy at that radio station because the amount of talent at, that, at KXOK was beyond my um, radio experience at the time. The people at KXOK were starting to realize that they were part of something bigger than they had ever experienced before. What took place and that brought us all together was the assembling of a group of people who created a radio station that was totally successful beyond anybody's wildest imagination. By 1966, this team that had been together a few short years had achieved a dream. We were um, uh, one of the five highest rated stations in the United States. We were the only top 40 station that was in the top five. All the others were old network affiliates. So that made us the number one highest rated station in the United States. Everyone shared in the success of the station but the growth that sprang from that was more personal. I think I, I felt special um, because I hadn't necessarily always felt special in my life. It was like one continuous party. The, everything that we did on the air uh, was just sort of a big party going on all the time. As a war raged in Southeast Asia, trouble at home fractured a nation. The music of the day reflected the changing mood of the country but KXOK ignored songs that strayed from their formula. We stuck to our original idea that if it was popular, if people wanted to hear it, we played it.
popular music transcended the social struggles, but as Bob Shannon explains, AM radio faced a bigger foe. What hurt AM radio was not the fact that they were playing certain kinds of songs, namely Top 40. It was the fact that people felt they could get better quality listening to the same music on FM. And they could. They could get it in stereo. By then, Cannell and his crew had already reached the top. Even today, the impact of that time is profound on the ones that were there. I was 35 when I arrived at the place, and most of them were in their 20s, so, you know, we were, we were all a bunch of kids. And uh, uh, it, it just became a, a fun but very competitive uh, world, and, and uh, we worked together well. But my two years that I spent here were two of the happiest years of my entire life. I love this city, I love the people, I love the restaurants, I love the sports. It's just one of America's great, great cities. And I had a ball here. You, you sense that, you get that feeling from your leadership. We want us, not me, not the station, us, the team, to be number one. And we can do it if we'll just all work together. The best people to that point in radio that I'd ever worked with, and some, the best ever that I've worked with. Just the greatest of times. To, to have fun and to be honest and enjoy what you can, um, and just be in the moment. It was the greatest working experience of my life because I learned how to to make decisions, effective decisions, based on the tried and proven ground rules and track record of men who had been very successful in delivering that brand of radio. Oh, I, I, I can sum it up, I can wrap it up very quickly. It was the best time in my life. The greatest collection of voices and talents I think uh, the radio world ever had and they were all under that one roof at Radio Park. And um, they, to this day, um, I believe are looked upon as the greatest collection of big voices that, that, that St. Louis and maybe even this country has ever had in one place at one time. They moved on to other cities and other challenges, but wherever they go, they always remember their special view of the 60s. They saw it looking down from the top. Together 